Morning, morning. Good morning to everybody. Crank the volume up. Right there. Let's see if uh, my uh, live feed goes more than 50 people this time. <laughs> it's incredible what Facebook is doing to us. Uh, good morning to everybody. Share, share so we can start. How's everybody doing? Good morning to everybody. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and for America's Voice. Great morning to everybody as we are rolling on this beautiful, uh, beautiful Friday. God bless everybody in my country of Mexico. In mi país de México, Dios bendiga a todos. Dios bendiga a la gente que está pasando por un mal momento. No se preocupen. Eh, es, es este, todo va a estar bien. Hay que rezar mucho. Hay que pedirle a Dios. Y créanme. Créanme que todo va a salir bien. God bless everybody in our country of Mexico, in our con in the city of Tijuana. God bless, uh, you know, uh, the people in the United States of America. God bless that country. God bless our neighbor. And let justice and freedom always prevail. Like the guys from uh, Liberty Prevail say. Ju uh, liberty will always prevail. Let, them, uh, let justice and liberty always prevail. How's everybody doing? Quick shout out to those guys, uh, Sack, uh, you know, uh, and all those fellas over there in Liberty, uh, Mayor Lee Liberty, great people, uh, great individuals and great, uh, uh, you know, uh, great young guys that are fighting for their country. Say hello to them. Good morning to everybody. As the uh, speculations are growing uh, from one day to another, yes, uh, people, it's a confirmation there is a shelter that is going to be open for 5,000 people in Tijuana, Baja California. Uh, the concerning thing, the concerning factor right here is that if, if you know, the human rights is going to have every single department right there to uh, control illegal activity. What is illegal activity? Well, uh, there's going to be a lot of trafficking of people right there, and there's going to be a lot of people that they're going to be in there for the wrong reason. Now, hopefully, security measures will be taken. Hopefully security people will be there. Hopefully the medical department and the health department will be there, hopefully. And everybody will have their own, uh, the facility will have the control absolute of the migrants, where they go in, their whereabouts, and how they're managing themselves inside the shelter as it was a complete uh, disorder and a complete disaster on the first caravan that came over here to our city and to our country. Um, speculation is growing and there's rumors that there's another one that is coming. As I told you guys, in December, there's a lot of asylum cases and a lot of asylum uh, numbers that they're gonna be given. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of asylum numbers, a lot of asylum cases that they are going to give out. Uh, in process to uh, go to court in the United States of America. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. I'm saying thousands of them. And there's a lot of people uh, in the South Door in Tapachula. There's a lot of people in Tapachula that they are waiting for the pieces of transit. Now, why there's speculation that there's a, that there's a new little caravan coming into our city? Uh, speculation is because this shelter is going to be open and they're going to be able to host uh, migrants that they're coming from the south. So now, you know, Tijuana opens up again as a city that it can host uh, people from the caravan uh, that they're coming and, and seeking asylum in the United States. Now, Tijuana opens, their, uh, opens up again to receive uh, people from the caravan that they're coming in uh, the purpose of seeking asylum and uh, and with the uh, factor that they are running away from fear, uh, violence, and delinquency. Uh, so, there's the speculation that a caravan is coming in the incoming weeks, small caravan, apparently uh, two to three buses, they are coming uh, to uh, the city of Tijuana, that is the main uh, city. But as we all know, uh, the caravan starts dissolving as 
it starts hitting every border. Tamaulipas, Nuevo Leon, uh, Matamoros, um, uh, Chihuahua, Sonora, and Baja California. When it gets to Baja California, the problem is that when it gets to uh, when it gets to our particular city, uh, you know, the, the caravan has already been dissolved or has already been dismantled. Uh, but uh, on the process, on this caravan, uh, security measures need to be taken. Hopefully this year, this incoming year, uh, they will put security measures and protection for the migrants. I will tell you why. There's a reason why people, there's a lot of trafficking of children. There's a lot of people with the cartel activity that they are, uh, you know, kidnapping uh, uh, people, uh, torturing uh, people. And this will be easily resolved as, you know, the government of Mexico, if it's not given out visas of transit, why are you letting them in and why are you letting them suffer? Now, they're suffering more on the process I'm going to from, from coming from Tapachula to the borders as they are suffering in their own country, really. So why is Mexico being responsible for all of this? The Mexican government, practically. The Mexican government is being completely irresponsible with the process of asylum seeking. The Mexican government is being completely irresponsible with the United Nations Pact. The Mexican government is not being responsible where where uh, they are getting deported and returning them back. Now, they became responsible because of our socialist president. He signed a United Nations Pact and in that pact, it says that you have to be responsible for their security, for their comfort, for their education, and for their medical care. Now, because of that, we have all of this. We already know that. But now that they're going to be start moving again, and they're going to be there's there's going to be a lot of deportations before the end of December, because in, uh, in halfway of December, half of the month, uh, the um, halfway of the month of December, the courts of the United States stop. They go on vacation. Now there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of process, a lot of legal process, and a lot of uh, court dates between now and this month of November and December. So it's going to be a really important month for uh, for the asylum seeking regarding the asylum seeking in our city of Tijuana. Also. If a caravan is going to arrive, the speculation is that the new shelter is going to be open around two weeks after the month starts of December or probably next year. Uh, you know, this, this is the reason why it hasn't been open. Uh, permits, that's number one. Electricity, that's number two. Water, that's number three. And, uh, number three. and also, they want to get every single, uh, every single uh, uh, department ready for them to take care of now there's a good question why they keep coming they keep coming because this agenda of pushing immigrants through the south door of mexico is still an agenda that is managed by our president andres manuel lopez obrador until our president says we are not going to put migrants through this horrible process we are not going to risk their lives and we are not going to accept no more caravans we are out of the International Pact of Immigration. Until that point, we will stop seeing all these little caravans. If that point doesn't correct itself, and if AMLO doesn't stop this, it's going to continue, people. It's not going to be, uh, you know, changing. It's not going to change. This uh, caravan situation is never going to stop. I believe that the caravan is really bad managed is not managed uh, well. Uh, it hasn't been, uh, you know, organized since it started. It has got, you know, a little better in regarding the security factor, I can say. Uh, the process of entering our country has become uh, a process. It was not a process before. And as you know, it was not a process before. Now it is a process. Now you have to wait for the visa of transit. Now you have to wait for this. Now you have to wait for that. 
So it is it is the way that it's supposed to be when you're seeking the asylum. The majority of the migrants are economic migrants, and they're migrants that, that you know, there's a large percentage of economic migrants, and there's a lot of percentage of migrants that they are suffering because of violence and delinquency. Now, there's a lot of migrants now, Mexican migrants, that they are uh, running away from their city, running away from fear, and running away from violence and delinquency. We need to find a way that we can educate, you know, our people so we can start fighting the corruption and we can start fighting the system in our country. This is the number one thing that we need to be resolving in our country. We need to resolve the corruption. We need to resolve uh, the, 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 the corruption factor when it comes to helping the poor, helping our people that is not, that is not being uh, corrected. And it's, it's going to be really difficult to correct in our country to, to, uh, to uh, change the corruption in our country is really difficult. It's going to be, uh, you know, a huge fight, and it's been a huge fight. So, uh, regarding the information for you guys, yes, uh, there's a little caravan speculation that it's coming. Uh, the caravan is around uh, two. Uh, they're speculating that it's um, <clears throat> two buses. I don't know how many how many people. It can fit on two, three buses, but that is how they're they're saying that that is coming. And regarding the new shelter, hopefully, in the new shelter, there will be enough protection uh, for order to not be a lot of trafficking uh, to uh, you know to our uh, to our city. A lot of trafficking to in, in our city that has been horrendous the number of trafficking of people trafficking of children that it has occurred in our uh in in our city in our in our country now the percentage regarding fake families and in fake uh in uh in fake marriages has decreased i will tell you that uh the percentage between fake families and fake uh marriages has decreased that is a great thing that is a great thing. That means that probably, you know, the the Border Patrol or the United States Customs or even, uh, you know, people that they are advising over here, migrants, they're telling them that that is not a route anymore. That, you know, that is not a route. And, you know, they have to do things correctly that like they need to do. So, you know, that is... Uh, that is a thing that is uh, good to say. Uh, fake marriages and fake families supposedly are decreasing, and uh, <clears throat> and that is you know a statistic that I was waiting to hear. Why? Because our main concern, uh, for me, my main concern is the trafficking of children and the trafficking of organs. That is one of my main concerns: the trafficking of children and the trafficking of organs. And it has decreased on regarding fake marriages and fake families but the trafficking of children has not decreased we just see we just saw a statistic uh given by uh the united states border patrol in arizona and more than 600 kids were reused in that border so it is horrible what is happening to minors it is horrible what is happening to uh children in the caravan it is horrible what is happening to families, but you know, this is the situation. They're going through a supposedly a third world secure country. That is our country. Our country is not secure. Our country should not be a third world secure country. When you have all these stats that they are, just Google these stats, please. Just Google these stats. When you have these stats that I repeat every day, for people to learn and for people to understand how our country is, when you have four cities on the top five, five on the top ten for violence and delinquency and homicides, when you have the number four border in the world is Mexico and the United States next to next Afghanistan, Iraq, North Korea, Mexico, and Syria, when you have, uh, n uh, we are number two on cultivating amapola in the world number one is uh is afghanistan 
We're number three on trafficking of children. We're number three on homicides of women in the world. Uh, <clears throat> and also we got 60 million in poverty, 28 million in critical condition, 68 million without medical care, 1.9 million of kids abandoned, 9.8 million uh, uh, minors without education. When you have all those stats, and you have a president that has uh, not done his job in terms of security with more than 28,000 murders in his first 11 months of his presidency, that is the worst start of a president in the history of our country. You start to acknowledging and you start to understanding that ultimately he is not the solution for our country. One, two, ultimately, ultimately you start understanding that there is a problem in our country, a huge problem. Ultimately, you start understanding that our country is not secure. And ultimately, we need to understand that we need to secure our country first for us to be receiving other people and not put them through this process. We are number one in the world for cartel activity and drug activity. We're number two in the world for clandestine cemeteries. So that tells you a lot about the kidnapping of children, the kidnapping of people, the, the trafficking of women. And that really put that, that is logic as we cannot be hosting and putting other people from other countries and from the world through this demonic process that is a horrible nightmare for these migrants. Horrible nightmare for all these migrants. Mexico is not a third world secure country. No, it is not. Tijuana still on the number one stat of a city that is violent in the world. It's the number one in the world. Tijuana went up in February as, it went up in February as the number one city in the world for violence and delinquency. And El Paso came into the picture in March of 2018. They were not before on 2017. Amazing, amazing. And the violence in, in Honduras has decreased on 2018 on a 58% because of the caravan movement that has come to our country. So we need to understand what has Mexico become? What has our country become? And what do they want our country to become? We don't have a problem with receiving people that they're seeking asylum. Really, I don't have no problem. The problem is the process. The problem is the organizations that they're involved. The problem is that there's organizations that they're taking advantage of migrants. The problem is that they're trafficking children, trafficking women, trafficking people. The problem is that they're doing things wrong. A lot of organizations, a lot of them, they're doing things right. But a lot of them, they're doing things wrong and it needs to be corrected and people that they're not from this country and they're from another country up north that they're bringing their politics they're bringing their activism they're bringing their political insights on being a democrat in our country or republicans in our country they need to get out this is not a war that you need to be in it this is a mexican battle us against socialism and us against uh, us against the corruption in our country. This is Mexican uh, battle. It's not nobody else's battle. It's Mexicans battle. Mexicans need to arrange and fix this. That is the thing. So good morning to everybody. How's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and for America's Voice. How's everyone doing? 
Happy Friday to everybody. God bless everybody on this Friday. As we are rolling early in the morning, uh, we're up in the morning. We're going to have our cup of coffee right now as soon as I, we get to our place. And hopefully everything will be great and everything will be all right today on this Friday. Uh, thank God that we uh, have two arms, two legs, mind that we can think and heart that we can feel. And let's, let's thank God for another day, another sunshine that we're, you know, that we're looking right now on the horizon. And, you know, God bless everybody that is watching. God bless everybody. Uh, my main concern has always been, has always been, are deported Mexicans as I have helped them uh, in many ways but another major concern that it has been of mine is the trafficking of people that's another major concern as security measures need to be taken now as for the security of these people because the migrant caravans I'm sorry people but they're not going to stop as I said before this is not going to stop in the meantime that we are on this United Nations pact, if we are in this pact, it's not going to stop. On the 11th of December, on this, uh, on this uh, December, on this year, it's where the pact, the United Nations pact, is going to be renewed. Let's see what our president does. Let's see if he is going to resign. He's going to resign again. Let's if, let's see if, he, if he's going to sign it again. And let's see if he sends Marcelo Ebrard, the Consulier of Mexico, if he sends Marcelo Ebrard to sign it again. Let's see if he does that. And let's let's see if the nation's pact continues in our country for another year. Every year it gets signed. And it has an expiration date that is, you know, it's a one year. So let's see if it gets signed again on the 11th of December, that it was, uh, you know, last year when it got signed in Morocco, it was the 11th of December. So let's see if it gets re-signed again. If it gets signed again, people, this is going to continue. This is going to continue. And, you know, uh, the only way that it can continue is if it's, it's done correctly. Uh, if people, you know, understand that, you know, uh, activists from the United States of America and organizations that they're helping need to come and help and get out. That's the purpose. Come and help and get out. You don't need to be over here. You're violating Article 33 of the Constitution. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. So when you are over here and you're working, it applies exactly the same as you have, you know, as the United States government, you know, is pretty uh, is strict regarding where's your visa. It applies for you guys. So where's your work visa? Where's your tourist visa? Sorry, but it's, it's just the way it is. México para los mexicanos y bienvenido todo aquel que quiera hacer las cosas bien. Con brazos abiertos se le recibe. God bless everybody. Uh, how's everybody doing? Good morning to everybody. Hope that, uh, that you guys have a beautiful morning on this Friday. Uh, <clears throat> for people that want to contribute to my work, there's my PayPal on the bottom. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Uh, follow my page, uh, Oscar Abu. Also, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at uh, YouTube as Oscar Blue. Follow me also in Twitter. I will be doing lives in Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Probably today I will be doing a live at Twitter uh, just to explain what is going on in our city. The same live that I just did right now, but I will do. I will. I will be doing it on Twitter, and also I will be doing it on YouTube. Tomorrow we have a huge day. Uh, as we are, I'm not going to say, <coughs> I'm not going to say where I'm going for security issues, but it's really important for you guys to see tomorrow the broadcast that I will be doing at a shelter uh, in Tijuana. It's really important that you guys see that broadcast, as probably I will be broadcasting at the Border Network News page. 
I will be broadcasting at Border Name with you space. Okay. Also, I will be doing a live broadcast at YouTube also later on. Se extrañan sus videos en español. También extraño que los compartan. No los comparten. Este es el problema. Que no los comparten. No los comparten. Pues, oye, voy a hacer uno al ratito. Uno hago al ratito. Jaime, te mando un abrazo y un saludo. Voy a hacer uno al ratito en español. God bless everybody that is watching. Hopefully, uh, you know, we get a, a beautiful day today on Friday. And uh, I send you guys a humongous hug. Uh, you know, and like we say, uh, follow my partner, Conservative Anthony, as he's running for Congress in District 16 of El Paso. And, uh, you know, stay safe. Stay safe. Let's stay, uh, let's stay focused. Let's stay working. And let's stay focused on the real problem that is this. This is the real problem. Let's try to fix that. Uh, and let's keep informing and let's keep doing a job that would need to be done. God bless everybody. Stay safe. And always remember, people, peace and love, because always your country's first.